Lesson three, insurance. So there are three primary types of insurance payers. There are commercial payers. Those are the Aetna, the United Healthcare, the Cigna, those types of uh, payers. There are private insurance payers like Blue Cross Blue Shield. And there are government insurance payers such as Medicare, Medicaid, and TRICARE. Each of these payers may have unique requirements for processing claims that you need to be aware of uh, with respect to the billing and coding. Patients also may not always know the details of their insurance coverage and the costs, and sometimes their financial responsibility may not be fully known until claims are processed and the payments are applied. The common types of insurance plans are the indemnity, the managed care, and the consumer-driven plan. The most commercial insurance and private insurance carriers offer one or a combination of these types of coverages. And these types of insurance coverage are usually provided by your employer, or your spouse's employer, or an organization you're affiliated with, such as a union or a professional organization. Talking about Medicare, Medicare has four different parts. There's Part A, the hospital coverage. There's Part B coverage, which is health insurance for like physician office visits. And there's Part C, the Medicare Advantage, it's a managed care plan, and there's Part D, which is prescription drug coverage plan. Now, Medicare is a federal single-payer health insurance program, and it's primarily for people over 65 and, and some younger people with, with certain conditions, such as kidney failure. Medicare claims are processed by contractors. They're called MACs, Medicare Administrative Contractors. There are some other government insurance agencies. There's Medicaid, which is a, a federal health insurance program, for low-income and disabled patients, and it's administered by state governments with federal matching funds. The, the coverage varies state by state, but there are federal minimum requirements for health care. TRICARE, which used to be called CHAMPAS, it provides medic medical care for active duty military and, and their families, and retired military and their families, and also survivors who are not yet eligible for Medicare. And then there's CHAMP VA, which is a civilian health care program for veteran affairs, which shares health care costs with the beneficiaries. I want to talk about insurance verification for a moment. Uh, verification determines if an insurance policy is active, if it requires referral, if it, it determines the type of plan that a patient has, and it determines their deductible, their coinsurance, and their copay. So, uh, insurance verification is very important up front because it tells the patient and the provider exactly who's responsible for payment, especially the uh, patient. Another term you hear a lot in medical billing is the coordination of benefits, or COB for short. And that's necessary when a patient has more than one insurance policy. And the COB establishes which payer is the primary payer, which payer is secondary. And in our fundamentals course, we get into the details of how that's determined. But you want to prevent duplicate payments and, and make sure that, that both the primary and the secondary policies do not exceed the provider's charges. In order to participate as a network provider with an insurance payer, a physician or doctor provider must be credentialed or contracted with that payer. The credentialing process is a process of requesting to participate in a health insurance network or to be contracted with an insurer. What this does is it qualifies them for the benefits or the privileges of being associated with that insurance and, and to be considered a network provider. Uh, claim payments to an out-of-network provider are usually not as high and they may require patients to pay higher copays and coinsurance than a network provider. Depending on who the insurance payer is, the credentialing process can take weeks or months. Medicare can take up to 90 days. Uh, they typically don't take that long, but they do tend to take longer than commercial and private payers, which are usually in, in the month or less range. So for many practices, a medical billing specialist is usually involved with the credentialing process, or they may be expected to just take care of it which means filling out the paperwork and ensuring it's submitted correctly and um, following up on it. And if there's any problems, correcting it, resubmitting it, and collecting all the information necessary for uh, 
the application process. Patient responsibility. I just wanted to mention uh, the three patient responsibility classes. There's the copay, which is the fixed amount the patient pays that goes directly to the provider at the time of visit. This, this typically does not count towards any annual deductible, but some plans it may. Uh, this is usually like a, a, a small amount, like $25, some $30, $10, depends on the, the plan. There's also the deductible, and that's the amount the patient pays each year before their insurance begins paying. And there's also coinsurance, and the, this is the portion that the patient pays once the deductible is met. This is usually expressed as a percentage. You may see 90, 10, 80, 20. Well, the, the, the second number, the 20% or the 10%, that's the patient coinsurance or the patient responsibility. So that concludes lesson three on insurance payers and insurance types.